Which planet has an atmosphere? And why? Some planets in our solar system, like Earth, has a ninth atmosphere. Some planets doesn't have any atmosphere, or they have very sparse atmosphere with particular gases. On other planets, like Jupiter, we have very thick, rich atmosphere. What determine if you have atmosphere on your planet or not? Let's talk about that. First, let's figure out what is the atmosphere. Atmosphere, it's the layer of gas which is held by the planet gravity. Each of the planet have its own mass and a gravity field. And if it's not in a solid form, the material that the planet composed of, and we know that many outer planet has semi-liquid or even plasmic type of surfaces. They still might retain the gases on top of it, which we call atmosphere, or not, for example, like Mercury. Let's see which parameters of the planet will determine if this layer of the gases will stay on its surface or not. First of all, we need to talk about the types of atmosphere we can find on a planet. The gases which differentiated during the formation of the planet. When the planet was formed, it was condensing, more heavier materials, elements were going towards its bottom or surface, and the gases stay all around it. At the same time, we can have the atmosphere which formed during the lifespan of the planet. And we call it odd gazing. It's the gas which come from the interior of the planet through its life. For example, our planet have a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere, hydrogen, oxygen and other elements, carbon dioxide, which come out during the degazing through the volcanic activity. In case of the Earth, we have the atmospheric composition change through the life forms developed on our planet. And it won't be the primary atmosphere, it will be secondary or further atmosphere of that particular planet. So what determined for the gas to stay on the surface of the planet or not? As you remember your basic physics classes, each of the molecular moves in form of the gas, the molecular vibrate and move with particular speed. We call it molecular speed. The speed of the molecular, how fast it will vibrate, spin, will depend on its mass, how many protons, neutrons in an atom, how big the molecular and how complex. In the previous videos about radiometric dating and climate proxies, we talked about these properties of the molecules. For example, hydrogen have one proton, or one proton, one neutron, and its mass is very low. So the molecular have quite high speed. And with increase of the temperature, it will increase its speed faster. Therefore, for example, like on our planet, we don't have much free hydrogen in our atmosphere because it's vibrate very fast. And if it's reached the high levels of the atmosphere, these molecules, and if the direction of the movement will be pointing away from our planet, the molecular of the hydrogen will just escape our atmosphere and go into the space. But the molecules all stay around our planet by the forces of gravity. So, of course, the bigger the radius of the planet, the denser the planet, the bigger gravity will be on this planet. So the gravity will be one of the parameters that will influence the atmosphere composition, thickness, and if you have atmosphere at all. And as I said, temperature will affect the speed of these molecules as well. So if your planet is closer to the sun, obviously we have higher temperatures on the surface. It will mean that it's easier for lighter molecules to escape the atmosphere of that planet. In summary, you can easily calculate knowing your expected molecular speed. For example, for hydrogen, it will be one number. For heavy molecules like oxygen or two, it will be higher number. Mass weight will be 32 rather than one or two as for hydrogen. Therefore, you can imagine the oxygen have more possibilities to sunk down towards the bottom and stay in the atmosphere then lighter hydrogen with high temperatures will escape it easier. Escape velocity as well, depending on the gravity and the radius of the planet. Therefore, is my molecular speed will be higher than escape velocity for this particular planet, which depends on its radius, therefore gravity and mass of that planet. So I will lose these particular atoms. 
We can differentiate all the molecular gases in our atmospheres around our solar system for light gases and heavy gases. And depends how far the planet from the Sun, temperature-wise, is this planet is heavy, big gravity, we will retain the atmosphere heavy and light gases, or we will just retain heavy gases or none gases at all. There's other parameters which will affect if you have atmosphere or not. For example, things like solar wind. It's the constant flow of the particles coming from the sun. We call it solar wind. And if they're strong enough, they can swept away the light gases on the high surface of this planet, atmosphere away into the space. We know on our planet Earth, we have strong magnetic field which produced by our core, metal core. If I didn't have the metal core, I didn't have the strong magnetic field around my planet, and it's protect us from this wind of solar energy. It will semi-protect our atmosphere from being swept away. We're all seeing the aurora in the northern areas of our planet. This is the particles of the solar wind share against our high levels of atmosphere. For example, on the Mars, sparse molecules of the gases which retain on its weak surface due to the very low, almost non-existing magnetic field, swept away by the solar wind very easy. Therefore, we can rank all our planets, depends on these properties, and see which atmosphere they will have at the will, dominated by light or heavy gases, or they might not have atmosphere at all. Let's have a look on the order of our planets from the Sun outside to the ages of our solar system. We start with Mercury, closer to the Sun, Venus, Earth, Mars. We call it inner planets or earthy type terrestrial planets. And we have huge gases, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And it used to be Pluto, but it's not categorized as a planet anymore. Only the Mercury have no atmosphere at all. And we have the Mars with quite sparse atmosphere. Otherwise, the rest of the planet have atmospheres, but they differ. Let's look by parameters, for example, light and heavy gases, which, as we talked, depends on the gravity of the planet, its radius, its size, and the speed of these molecules. So light and molecules, as I say, have high speed and they're easier to escape. And the heavy gases, they stay longer, because they're heavier and they move a little bit lazier, slower. So Mercury is so close to the Sun, it has very high temperature on its surface, as light as a heavy gases, they both escape it. So we don't have atmosphere left. Venus has very thick atmosphere, but again the light gases escape it. If you calculate its escaping velocity and the speed of the light molecules, so we have only heavy gases left. And the atmosphere on Venus is very rich with carbon dioxide and it's hot. Next planet will be Earth, we know our atmosphere, it's dominated by heavy gases again. But the temperature is not as hot, so it's okay for us to live on. It's dominated by nitrogen and oxygen. Mars has very sparse atmosphere, dominated by heavy gases again, mostly carbon dioxide. And the temperature is a little bit cooler than on Earth. And you can figure out the radius of the Mars much smaller than the Earth, and we almost don't have any magnetic field on it. So therefore, the Mars easier lost its gases on its surface. It's a very, very sparse atmosphere. For us, it would be almost impossible to breathe. And it's very much sensitive to the solar wind. All these four planets have slow rotation. They all have solid surfaces. And they have temperatures from hot to temperate. Next, outer planets. It's the huge gas planet, we will call because of that, because mostly they composed of dominated gases, and heavy and light gases. This planet's quite far from the sun, the temperature on the surface lower, so they can retain those low gases, plus they have bigger radiuses. They don't have any solid surfaces, so if you go on the surface, for example, of the Jupiter, you kind of will sink into something between gas or plasmic state. All these planets are rotating quite fast, it will be surprising to know. And they have as heavy gases in the composition as light, like hydrogen, helium. They have lower density than our solid terrestrial planets and much colder temperatures. If I sum up, we can see Mercury doesn't have any atmosphere, 
Venus have rich carbon dioxide atmosphere with clouds dominated. That's why this planet is very bright, one of the brightest planets in our solar system. You can see it later in the morning and earlier than anything in the evening. We know that atmosphere is very hot there and greenhouse effect is very strong. Earth, nitrogen, oxygen composition of the atmosphere, it's half water, partially, not like Venus, so we don't have thick layer of the cloud all over the planet's surface. But we have uh, things like ice caps and the life forms on our planet. Mars. Mars has very sparse, low density carbon dioxide atmosphere. It has some ice caps, but they're not made of the water molecules, but the carbon dioxide molecules, dry ice. We're not sure if there's a life or much water on that planet. And then you have the rest of the planets with thick, gazy atmosphere, full of methane, ice, hydrogen and helium. The biggest atmosphere we can observe is on Jupiter, full of swirls of big cyclones. For example, the red spot on the Jupiter, bigger in the size than our whole planet. So you can categorize any other solar system like ours by these properties, knowing the speed of particular molecules for particular gases and knowing the radius approximate mass of the planet, temperature dominate on the surface, we can figure out can the planet has an atmosphere or not, which gases will dominate it. And for us, it's interesting because we can learn if the life possible there. So far in our solar system, the most habitat planet for us will be the Earth, of course, and maybe Mars, although it's not very comfortable temperature there and the atmosphere is not very breathable, but we can, using some technology, build some shelters and we might live there. Other planets are quite hostile for us.